love those shows about people who are kidnapped. You know, and they show the person who is kidnapped, and they show the person who they're trying to get a ransom off of, and uh, the person they're trying to get a ransom off of says, well, I know you really got them. How do I know they're not dead? And they'll slice off a piece of their ear, send it to them in the mail. Or cut off a finger, send it to them in the mail. Just to prove to them that they've got, they've got. It. I want you to always remember. Gene, you'll appreciate this. Because in, in one of our talks that we had, uh, we came up with this, and I thought it was brilliant. Because we come up with it. <laughs> but we are not the object of Satan's wrath. God is the object of Satan's wrath. And we are merely hostages. Don't ever forget that. That's the way it is. Satan hates God because God kicked him out of heaven. He doesn't hate us. He knows that God loves us. And in order to hurt God, He hurts us. So you've got that straight. Just so you've got that straight. How does He hurt us? He lies. That's his stock and trade. Let's go back to Genesis 1, 3, rather, and 1 through 6. Now the serpent, let me interject this, Satan hasn't always been a serpent. He was once very beautiful. The Lord cursed him after what he did, took his feet off, and consigned him to crawling on the ground and eating the dust uh, uh, the rest of the time. But I don't know what form he came to Eve in the garden. But it was probably as an angel of light, as a, a being of beauty, someone that she was not ready to run away from. The Bible says he does that, you know. All right, back to the scripture. And he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Just a flat out lie. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And then when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took a the fruit thereof, 
and did eat, and gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Satan comes in a beautiful form. And he makes the things that he tempts us with as to look like beautiful things. And that's why we miss it so much. You all know Martin Luther's hymn. A mighty fortress is our God. I won't attempt to say it in German. I'm feasty, but well, I just did attempt it. I'm, but anyway, Luther took exception to what the Catholic Church was doing. At that time, the Pope had told them that it was all right to do a thing called selling indulgences. And what this was was as at the street fairs that they had around, the priests would have certain dollar amounts for indulgences that the Catholic Church would permit you. <clears throat> hey, it's a feast day. You want to get drunk? Five dollars, I'll make sure it's okay with God. You're looking at me like you don't believe me. That actually happened. And it was going on, on Luther's Day. You want to commit adultery? Ten dollars. I'll make sure it's all right with God. Go with my blessing. St. Peter's Basilica. One of the most elaborate, expensive buildings in the world was built with indulgence money. And Luther saw this on his first trip to Rome. He saw a monk by the name of Tetzel selling indulgences. They had set him up a booth at a street fair. And he was selling indulgences and he got to looking into this. And he found out that many priests were selling indulgences. And folks, that's why we're here today. The Protestant Reformation got started. This was all Luther could bear. And he tacked his 95 theses to the wall of the church in Wittenberg, Germany. And if you read those 95 theses, most of them were against the selling of indulgences. And he wrote that famous hymn. A mighty fortress is our God. And I remember the third verse of that hymn. The prince of darkness grim. We tremble not for him. His force and power are great and armed with cruel hate. But one little word shall fell him. Now, of course, he wrote that in the original German. And a guy by the name of Hedges translated it into English. And he had quite a job on his hands to make it rhyme the way he did. But that one line there, he did not have to translate. He left it just like it is. One little word shall fell him. And people ever since have wondered what that one little word is. I told you one time what that word was. Do you remember? Okay, that's how long sermon slaps. That's <laughs> why we have to stand through every Sunday. Okay? Amen. The word, and we find this out in a treatise that he wrote to Duke Henry IV of Brunswick, 
who was not only royalty, but he was a high clergyman in the Catholic Church, and he was one of the great proponents of selling indulgences. And he wrote this to Duke Henry, and he revealed that that one little word is, it's not Jesus, it's not faith, the word is liar. And Luther was fond of saying, Devil! And when he said it, he hollered. Devil! You lie! You are a liar from the beginning. You are the father of lies. Anytime Luther was tempted, he would say, Devil, you lie! And I'll tell you something. The same thing will work for us. And the same thing is true for us. Devil, you lie. What if Eve would have said that to the devil? When he said, look, the fruit is good. God knows that you'll be as wise as him if you eat of it. What if Eve had turned to the serpent and said, devil, you lie! Well, if she had done, uh, done that, and everybody thereafter had done that, I probably would have been the one that ate the fruit. <laughs> Somebody would have. But if we will just call Satan what he is, and name his stock and trade when he tempts us. Devil, you lie. One little word shall fail him. What does James tell us? Resist the devil and he will what? He will flee from you. He has no option. He will flee from you. Satan tells scores of lies. But there are three that he is telling the world today that I think we ought to take note of. The number one lie, I believe that most people in this world today have bought is that real, the only thing that is real is what is material that you can touch or sense with your senses. There is no God. There is no heaven. There is no hell. There is no judgment day. There is no absolute truth. What's right for you is truth for you, and what's right for me is truth for me. And the worst lie he tells us is that there is no Satan. He wants us to believe that there is no Satan. That there is no God. Folks, I know this has got to be true. I know it's got to be true not only for those who are non-Christians but for those who are calling themselves Christians and are still non-Christians. And there's a lot of those too. And see, I get to get up here and spout this stuff off and I can take off on my motorcycle and never have to deal with you folks again. <laughs> That's good every once in a while, isn't it? Why is it that everybody in the church is so quick to condemn homosexuality until one of their kids come out of the closet? 
And then somehow, oh, maybe we shouldn't be so hard. You know, maybe we shouldn't be like it. Why is it that we do that with so many things that the Bible plainly says are sin? And we cannot get around it. Folks, I'll tell you, there are people who call themselves Christians. Listen, they're supposed to be one point or, or 2.2 billion of us on earth. 2.2 billion Christians. That's the largest religion in the world by far. The Muslims only have 1.7 billion. We outnumber them by 500 100 million people. Don't you think things would have changed a little bit? Don't you think things would have changed a little bit? If there were 2.2 billion Christians on the face of the earth? You know what that says to me? <clears throat> that says to me that a lot of them are Christians well un until it, it gets hard and then we're gone and we just play church from then on yes Satan tells the lie that there is no God that the laws of physics are all there is. He tells the lie that the scientific method explains everything that exists unless it can be hypothesized about, unless it can be tested and retested with the same results. It is not real. And you know, I'm thinking we should recarve Mount Rushmore. Are we following George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Ted Roosevelt, and who's the other guy that's up there, Thomas Jefferson? Are we following what they wrote? Are we following their their No, I'll tell you who should be up there. Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, Francis Hegel, and Friedrich Nietzsche. How many of those names do you recognize? Read them, will you? If you get a chance, read them. Just go to Wikipedia. Read a little bit about what they were about and what they taught. That is exactly the mindset that our people are taking here. I do not fear the Muslims. I do not fear any group that threatens to take America from the outside. We, our enemies are among us. They're in our universities. They are in our newspaper journalism. They're writing the books that are our best sellers. They're in the music that is written and played and listened to on regular basis. There needs to be, I guess, a new Mount Rushmore. And there are not 2.2 billion Christians on the face of the earth. <clears throat> that lie that Satan says is all that exists, all that is real is material. And everything else is just so much, so
superstition. Secondly, he writes the lie that bad is good and good is bad. He is the antithesis of God. He turns everything around 180 degrees. It's not that complicated. When God says something is good, Satan turns it around and says it's bad, and vice versa. And that's what we see going on in the world today. Isaiah 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Go back to the Garden of Eden, if you will. Oh, the fruit, it is so beautiful. It is so delicious. And look what it did. Look what it did. I can't even read the next line I wrote in my notes. My hands are getting a little bit sick. Let's go on to line number three. I just can't read the rest of what I wrote on line number two. I said enough about it anyway, didn't I? Line number three. The devil has got to rob us of the assurance of salvation. You know, I know the time I've heard preachers stand up and say, how many of you want to go to heaven? How many of you are gone? And you know, I've seen a few people very hesitant to raise their hand. I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll have to wait till the judgment day to find out. I want everybody in this room who has confessed that they believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who has obeyed Him in immersion, and everybody who is still trying to walk by the Holy Spirit to know that if you died right now, the next sight you'd see would be Jesus' face. Amen. I want a congregation of people and a congregation of brothers and sisters who know that beyond the shadow of a doubt. And I do know that among us are sinners. <laughs> and I may be the chief. But folks, it's going to be that way until I die. <clears throat> you know what? I thought one time that I could I could get to the place where I was perfect. I got over this little thing and I got over that little thing. And you know, I said, <laughs> doggone. I may, I may become perfect here. <laughs> little Jack Corner. Stuck his thumb in the pie and said, what a good boy am I? That was. 
Yeah. And you know, the very moment I got over those sins, then I got old. And I found out there's a whole bunch of new sins now and temptations. Now that you get old. Young people, if you think you're ever going to get out of it, I hope you get old. I hope you get old, but I want you to know that when you do get old, there's going to be another set of temptations come your way. And you're going to be fighting them and battling them. Right now, I, I got to be honest with you, can, can we talk? Can we talk? Right now, I'm worried about the cost of medication. <laughs> you know what my insulin cost me out of pocket? 600 bucks a month. Now, I just got on welfare the other day. I didn't get on welfare. What did I get on? You got me on it. <laughs> Medicare. Medicare. Yeah. Medicare. I got on Medicare and I got the supplement. And that's going to, boy, that's going to save me. I'm just waiting for the next temptation to come down the pipe now. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know it'll be there. And I know that on the day I die, <clears throat> I'm still going to be wrestling with something. Amen. I'm still going to be fighting with something. I'm still going to be going to bed at night and saying, Lord, I messed up. Forgive me. Help me. I'm still going to be taking those emblems on Sunday and saying, I did I messed this up last week. We got to work on that. And I'll, t I'll be saying that at the very last communion I take. I'm being brutally honest with you this morning. Brutally honest. The devil is never going to give up on me. I thought finally I could get to the place where he'd say, oh, forget him. He's gone. He's lost us. Let's work on somebody else. But no, no, no. He will not be satisfied until... He's got every last one. I want you to realize that you are saved. I want you to be able to say with all the truth in your heart, if you died today, I'd go to heaven. We live in fear and non-productivity. And we grow to hate God. We grow to see God as a bully. Don't you? I do. And I never react good to bullies, Paul. You know what I'm talking I don't react good to bullies. You know, I got all my growth, all my growth, by the time I was a freshman in high school. As a matter of fact, I'm not as tall as I was when I was a freshman in high school. I think gravity is taking its hold. They used to have a hazing, the seniors did for the freshmen. You know what they wanted to make all of us boys do? 
They want to make us take our pants and put them on backwards and wear them all day backwards. Zip them up the back. That was our hazy. I'm ashamed to say it, but I took one of those seniors by the collar with this hand, and I took his belt buckle by that hand right there, and I turned him upside down, and I put him in a wastebasket. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not wear my pants back. <laughs> As a matter of fact, for the next four years, nobody had anything to do with me. My wife says, were you bullied when you were not? Uh, she says, were you bullied when you were in high school? I said, no, I was a bully. <laughs> I don't react well to bullies. That's probably why I hate myself. That's probably the biggest problem I have with myself. If I thought God was a God who promised me salvation and then took and hung me by a thread and swung me over hell <laughs> and then swung me back over heaven, <laughs> I would say, God, you are a bully. Cut me loose. Let me go. I don't want anything to do with you. If you do me that way, I'd rather get clean with Satan. God. If he is, I don't want to know who he is. I don't want to believe in him. <clears throat> you know where we get that? We get it as a whole order from the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church held sway over the kings of this earth by developing a priesthood that could do things like offer indulgences and developing a priesthood that could do things like offering forgiveness and develop a priesthood that could do things like demand that you come in for confession every little web stitch. And if you didn't, you'd go to hell. That's exactly what they did. And us Protestants upon it. You know the need if you get a wild down the stairs I can hear. <laughs> please, please, let me God, help me sum this up and quit. I want you to know that you're saved. My last illustration, people come to me all the time. When I was a preacher, and says, Ken, I think I've lost my salvation. I think I've lost my salvation. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. And I have one stock standard answer that I give back to them. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're afraid, the fact that you're concerned about it is proof positive that you have not lost. If you had lost it, you wouldn't even be worried about it. Oh, there's a lot more I'd like to say, but I gotta quit. Devil, you lie. Just remember that. Let's pray. Oh God, I've taken up 
too much of these people it's tired of him. God bless them. Lord, I couldn't have taken the communion today and held those precious elements in my hand. If I had thought that you were some kind of an Indian giver. <laughs> Lord, let me know the joy of the assurance of my salvation. Oh, Lord, let me with Paul, as he told his dear son, Timothy, I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day, period. In Jesus' name, I